Hello friends, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin and this is your first time here. Welcome to Booked and Busy and welcome to my Throne of Glass reading vlog. So in this video, I'm going to be reading the entire Throne of Glass series. This is going to be a first time read for me. I'm going to be reading the seven core novels as well as the prequel novella bind up. Um, so we have all of that's going to be happening in this video. Uh, I've challenged myself to read this in like a week-ish. Uh, I give myself like seven days and according to the math there are 5,008 pages in the entire series and to finish that in seven days I need to read 715 pages a day. Now I'm a few days into this challenge and let me tell you that hasn't been happening but I'm making good progress. So I have at this point in this video I have already read The Assassin's Blade, uh, Throne of Glass, and Crown of Midnight and I'm 100 pages into Air of Fire. So you will definitely be seeing me in this space again as I do my Air of Fire updates but I am so excited to be going on this journey with you all. This vlog is going to be spoiler filled. It will be chaptered by books so if there are certain books that you have read uh, you can uh, get my spoilery thoughts on those and if there are ones that you have not read you can just hold off until you have to go back to those so i'm very much looking forward to this. this is like my year of math because in this one i in this year alone in the last six weeks i have read a court of mist and fury a court of rings of ruin a court of frost and starlight a court of silver flames and house of sky and breath and after reading house of sky and breath i was like you know i feel like there's something that i'm missing um because i had read the akatar series so i'm like i could see you know elements of the world building that were similar things like that i could see that but i'm like i know that there is a greater connection that i'm missing because i have not read throne of glass throne of glass is also on my uh series to marathon this year and my spring series so i am really excited to be reading this and taking you out on this journey with me this is going to be a long one so you know strap in with some snacks a nice drink and let's get into it good morning friends welcome to day two of this project so i know i'm saying day two when you didn't see me yesterday because yesterday was a one but i didn't vlog yesterday i meant to but i just didn't get around to it so you already watched the intro, you know you're reading Throne of Glass this week. And I did the math and according to Google, the Throne of Glass series, including the prequel novella bind up, is 5,008 pages. And for me to read this in seven days, um, I would need to read 714 pages a day. Well, I do think that's possible, it's unlikely. Especially because I'm starting this during the work week, like today is when Thursday, March 3rd. Um, so, I think my goal is to get this done eight or nine days. Hopefully you'll, you're you seeing this on the 13th of March, that is my goal. So let's talk about it. So today is day two and I have not hit the 714 page goal, but I have finished the book. So yesterday I read the entirety of The Assassin's Blade, which is the prequel novella bind up. Now I know in publication order this came out maybe after book two or after book three, um, but I spoke with Becca and she said this would be like going straight into throne of glass at this point would be like starting crescent city after danica was dead and after everybody had died and so i was like okay well i'll go ahead and read this one first so i did so this is consisting of five stories um i'm drinking my morning coffee because i'm about to get ready to go to work so we're gonna talk about them mm. Okay, also, this vlog is going to be spoiler filled, so if you don't want to be spoiled for the Throne of Glass series or whatever, do that and I'll have it chapter by book or you'll know by book. So if you've read some of them up to a certain point, you can enjoy it. So the first story in here is, um, what's it called? The Assassin and the Pirate Lord. So The Assassin and the Pirate Lord is like 75 pages long. And in this one, we meet Selena Sardothian and we kind of start the legend of Selena, of being the, uh, you know, the best assassin in this kingdom, the protege and heir apparent for Aber, is it Aberlin? Aberin? Child, I don't know, something like that, whatever. Um, Aberin, I th yeah, Ar Arobin, excuse me, I'm mixing my letters up, for Arobin, and we meet her as she is in Saint out on a mission, her and Sam. Sam is like the number two, he's like 
right up under Selena and I guess there's a lot of tension with it because they have like a little rivals relationship so she gets sent out to do this to do this business thing with this pirate lord and she's sent there under these like dubious circumstances um and she is unaware of the true intent of the meeting with the pirate lord so when she gets there she finds out the Arab is actually entering into the slave trade and he sent her there to secure the purchase and transport of a hundred slaves well, Miss Elena ain't going for it. And so she decides that she is going to free the slaves and, you know, fight the pirate lord and do whatever she got to do because she doesn't believe in slavery. Now, I do think this probably has something to do with her backstory that we're unaware of. But um, in the context of the story, we don't actually know more than that. That one was okay. Uh, I think I'll probably give that maybe like three stars. It wasn't great. It was fine. Um and i could see the relationship between her and sam for me and as soon as sam started showing some films for her i said oh baby sam not long for this girl the second story is the assassin and the healer and that one is pretty short it's like 40 maybe 50 pages and in this one we follow selena after she has um after she's gone on this you know mission with the pirate lord or whatever and this is on her way back to Erobin. and in this one we meet irene who i've come to find out is someone that we meet in Puerto later and irene is supposed to be black now I, I didn't see that but maybe later i'll get some more explanation uh and in this one we it's just a quick little like day where selena's at this this inn and she you know is on her way back to Arabin and she meets this young girl who had been training to be a healer was the daughter of a healer but she was like on hard times and she was working at this end to like make her money to go to this like famed healers school um but some people like selena look she walking in got that drip she looking rich you know and she look young the people are like oh we gonna try her we know she's leaving whatever we're gonna try you gonna rob her for all her you know her stuff and then Irene is also like one night she like is getting good tips and so these people try to rob her. And so of course Selena Captain Savaho comes in and saves the day and she uh, teaches Irene some like self-defense skills or whatever. And they do that and Irene she gives her enough money to go on to the school. Boom. You could tell that there's going to be some significance with Irene there just because Selena has nothing to gain by helping her. And because we were also getting Irene's POV, I'm like, I know that that's going to circle back around. The next story, which is probably my favorite story, uh, is The Assassin in the Desert. And this one, so like this obviously is a novella bind up. And from my understanding, these novellas came out at different points throughout the publication of Throne of Glass. Um, and so but these stories while they happen consecutively there are time jumps between them so in this one it's been a few months uh and a, a, a selena has gone back to arab and she's been punished both her and sam have been punished and her penance is to go to the red desert and uh travel through it and go to the um home of like the mute mimes i think is what it's called like the silent assassins and the the leader is called the mute master and he uh she's supposed to train with them for a month and secure his blessing and like a little recommendation saying that you know she has some more self-restraint or whatever because they have this art of the way they do things well she goes out there and she befriends this girl she makes her first like girlfriend named ansel and her and ansel are best buds and uh she is you know starting to do the routines of the silent assassins and uh her and ansel get into some shenanigans and her response to those shenanigans leads uh the silent math the mute master to uh apprentice selena like okay you can come work with me and so he's training her and his training seems very unorthodox and uh she's learning like the movements and mannerisms of these various desert animals they start with the ass i think with the snake and they look at the bats and all these other animals to see like how they move and how they move silently to like overthrow their opponent even when they're not very large or whatever and so in this one my goodness is, is besties with ansel or whatever and then uh something happens and she's like drugged and sent away and ansel was like here's your little recommendation um the mute master thought it would be easier this way so she's leaving she's like something about this don't feel right so she then 
opens up the letter and is like always oh, blank and she's like i see some people on the horizon he wouldn't have sent me away like i'm the i'm the baddest assassin in the land i'm the baddest assassin for for ever lower over lower wherever and she's like something up something up she's like oh answer can't be trusted so she running and she running she go back to the castle it's gonna be giving you a, like a rundown of each of these stories she goes back to the castle and then uh she fighting through and she get to the like throne room we'll call it that where uh ansel has been working with the enemy because the enemy promised her 100 horses to go and rescue and reclaim her homeland basically or whatever so that's happening uh let me make sure try got to work Ooh, let me let me wrap this up uh so that happens and then she saves the mute master she also spares ansel's life and th this is the best story in the whole bunch she spares ansel's life and then the mute master gives her her recommendation and he gives her enough gold to buy her freedom from Eric. The next story, and so that one was like a hundred pages and some change. Like, wait, hold on. Actually, it's a little bit longer. Than that. So that one was like a hundred and ten pages long. Okay. The next one is the Assassin and the Underworld. So in the Assassin and the Underworld, okay. In the Assassin and the Underworld, this one we follow Selena when she's gotten back from the Red Desert and she goes back to Erevin and you know tries to prove herself to him and. We follow her as he gives her another task, and this task is like not not to like prove her loyalty again, but he gives her another task because it's just the baddest thing ever, and she uh, is in the process of like she wants she's moving out, she wants to buy her own place, she wants to live independently of them but still work with them, she wants to uh, at some point like buy her way out of the contract she's in with him her and sam so this one she is uh told that these people are trying to enter into the slave trade and this is this because we know that's a trigger from selena now well she does this and it turns out that arabin had duped her and that the people she killed are people who were trying to save the slaves and the people that she was working for people who were trying to like like manipulate them kill them put these people in slavery and so this is like the breaking point for selena and so she's like you know what? i'm out here to go i'm out um i'm gonna buy my freedom i'm about sam's freedom because sam is her kept man and uh she does just and there's also like this like courtism storyline that her and sam this girl and i think lasandra's her name i think she i think she's gonna be significant maybe later on um with her and Arabin uses the money that selena you know used to buy for freedom to buy this girl's virginity basically also the relationship between Arabin and selena very much gives me grooming because she'll be like oh the father the brother the lover that never really realized and this and that he's like treat her like a pet and i'm like oh it's giving nasty it's giving gross uh so that was that that story was okay and then the last one is assassin in the empire and baby the writing was on the wall. It was very clear that Mr. Sam was about to be dead. So now they done bought their freedom and he's like, oh, we're trying to get out. We're at the guild and uh, this is going to take all their money. So Sam's like, you know, we got to pull out one one last run, one last run so we can get out of here. We can go to a different continent. We can start over. And so he gets the riskiest job imaginable. He's like, oh, we're going to kill the biggest crime lord and his number two. And Selena was like, that doesn't even make sense. Nobody would do this. Da, 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 da. Oh, this girl turned out. Everybody had set them up. Set them up so that they would kill Sam and then Selena getting revenge would be how the, the number one guy died and the number two guy could take control. And Selena didn't even realize that it was Arab and betraying her child. I was like, mm, I, I knew what I knew, I knew what I knew, I knew what was gonna happen. And so we end with Selena getting captured and they're like, you know what? You're not even we're not even gonna kill you. Cause she was like, oh make it quick, you know, kill me quickly. And they were like, nah, baby, we're not even gonna do that. We're gonna send this you to nine lifetimes or whatever in the salt mines. And so that's how we end with Miss Girl as a slave. So that was Assassin's Blood. And then last night I read the first 25 pages of Throne of Glass. Now going into Throne of Glass, I am just like, oh my god, I can't believe the girlies, y'all, had to read this without the context of that, because this this starts in first in 25 pages, baby Selena already out the salt mine. So you come into this book and you hear Selena Sardothian, da, 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 da. she got her name got weight in the street. She the bad assassin, she this and she that. But like without the Assassin's Blade, because I mean, it's bare minimum in the Assassin's Blade. But prior to the Assassin's Blade, like you don't get any of that. You don't understand why her name has this weight. You don't understand the circumstances that got her to this position. You don't understand 
why her what her motivations are with the death of Sam and her revenge on Arabin and whoever because you don't even know what's going on. You don't like you just come in. She there for three pages. She out. K we just met KL and Dorian. I know that they're significant, but I know that neither one of them is the actual love interest. I think um, just because it's a Sarah J. Mass book. Um, so I can see why the assassin, like the the novellas were necessary. To give you Selena's backstory, her being the baddest assassin in the land at 16 really don't make sense to me. But this is not a logic in competition. Um, but yeah, so only 10 pages into this one. And I do plan on reading the entirety of this today. Um, this one is 400 and like just, just at 400 pages. So I plan on reading the entirety of this today. And hopefully starting Crown of Midnight. Crown of Midnight is also not particularly long. It's like 420 pages. So the goal is to finish the entirety of this and read some of this. So that is where I am. Uh, I'm about to go to work and I will talk to you all later. Bye. Friends, it has been a few hours. It's 2.20. Um, I have about three hours and some change left before I have to leave work. But I have finished up my work for the day. Let me not, you know, speak too soon. But I, I do think I'm finished for the day. And I have read 200 more pages of Throne of Glass. So I am on page 217. So I'm just under 200 pages. And I'm right past the 50% mark. So I thought now would be a good time. Oh, the camera's over here because I flipped my camera around. N now would be a good time to give y'all an update. So I spot with my little eye a love triangle. Now, in my perfect world, it would be Polly because they could all just be together. But I know that's not going to happen. And I also know that from Sarah J. Mass's history, that the two love interests we have right now, they're not even going to be like the final boss. So, 217 pages in, in chapter 29. Um, and in this one, you have like a competition setting. So, the catalyst for Selena being uh, removed from the mines of Endovia or whatever, uh, the salt mines, is that she compete in this uh, competition to be the king's assassin and there are a number of people that are being sponsored by various lords and ladies and influential people in the glass castle and in the the in auto world whatever is that what it's called i think that's what it's called like i keep calling it auto world but i think it's what it's called i'm not sure and she is obviously being championed by dorian and dorian and kay all the two love interests dorian is the crown prince and he and and he is the one who wanted Selena, and then Kaol is the, the captain of his royal guard. And Kaol is also he's also a lord, but he like um, abdicated. I, I guess abdicated would be the throne, but he stepped down from his position because he wanted to be the royal guard for for Dorian because they had been childhood friends. And um, he is no longer a lord, but he's from a good family. And uh, so far, Selena is pretending to be someone else because people don't, they don't want people to know that she is the famed, you know, assassin. But some people may know or have some inklings that she is and who she says she is. And we've also recently met Nehemia, and I think that character is important, but she's a princess from, I could be wrong, but I think she's like the princess from Terrison or like wherever Selena's from, but I, I, I may have misheard that. Um, so far we're going through these various trials and like it had like a little one by one element because at the end of each trial some the loser uh is killed or you know gone back to the prisons but also there's like a mystery element or like a sinister element underneath all that because something is happening and people are being like eaten and mauled and their bodies are being like mutilated and selena uh, we know that the king, when he united all the realms or whatever, he cast out the fae and the fairies and all that. We got like a whole little history lesson there. But Selena has like interacted with this person who we, we believe, we're supposed to believe at least, is the first prince, the first queen of of this world from hundreds of years ago who ain't dead. And it's like, she must be a fairy or something like that. So that's where I am. And Kaol and Dorian both seem to be fighting some type of attraction or at least some type of pull towards Selena uh, or Lilith as she's going by. And Selena's also making an enemy, I think, of this other woman that's at court who wants Dorian's attention. And she's forming a bit of a friendship with Nehemia as well. So that's what's going on. I have three hours until I have to leave work. So I want to at least get to the 300 page mark. I should be able to do that in three hours, don't you think? 
um, because I want to finish this today and I want to start crowning midnight. But I also have another book that I want to do some reading in, so we'll see um, what tasks I have that I can complete while listening to the audiobook. So when I come back to you, it'll either be like a major plot point or when I finish this because I have eight books to read for this video. I don't want it to be too long for each update. So halfway mark, big updates, ending is kind of the plan. So I'm gonna go read and I'll see you later. Bye. Good morning, my friends. Happy Saturday. So it's been a minute since we spoke, but I have been reading. So I think the last time we spoke would have been Thursday afternoon when I was still at work and I was like halfway through Thorn of Glass. I haven't looked at the footage, but that sounds about right. Uh, I have still been tracking like my daily pages and you know, some, some reviews and all that for you. So let's get into it. So um, I finished Throne of Glass on Thursday. Uh, and I think I ended up doing Maybe that was a different book. I don't know. I did some reading sprints with my patrons. That was on Wednesday. Uh, so anyway, I finished Under Glass and it was okay. It was okay. Uh, I definitely think that starting with the Assassin's Play was the correct choice. I don't, I mean, I know it, it didn't come out before that, but I, I could certainly see how people would have issues reading this and like not having context for all the things that were happening with, without those short stories coming beforehand. Um, this was very similar to Akatar, like the first Akatar book, in my opinion. Uh, it, you know, has the same like trial, competition element, all that. But while in Akatar the trial only comes in like the last third of the book, in this one the trial <clears throat> is the whole like catalyst for the novel. Pick like the it is where the novel starts. Like she's being picked up from Endovia to be a part of the trial but for that to be the focal point of the plot it is not a very big deal in 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 this book i feel like this book really served to set up the character relationships and dynamics between kaol dorian and selena her relationships between the two of them it was definitely a lot more focused on the those potential love interests than it was on the actual competition like the trials we would see them when it'd be like a paragraph oh this happened another person was gone this happened another person was gone um and i think that in true sarah j mass fashion you know she spends the two-thirds of the book like just getting you acclimated to the characters and getting to know them better and their relationships with one another and then she like crams the plot and like all these things into the last hundred pages and in this one we got some reveals about like the magic and what was really going on and you know we saw selena form her first like female friendship and all that but overall um this was just okay especially like I think I would have enjoyed it even less had I not um, read the Assassin's Play because Selena Sardothian is supposed to be this, the biggest, baddest assassin in the land. And just given like the context of this, even with having read Assassin's Play, I don't buy it. I don't buy it at all. Uh, it, it, it doesn't ring true. It, it It's just hollow because like she really don't do no killing. She really don't do no killing. Um, so that's that. So I read that. And um... So day one, which was Wednesday, let's say. Yeah, day one was Wednesday. And I read the Assassin's Blade and I read the first 25 pages of Thorn of Glass. And then day two, which was Thursday, I read all of Thorn of Glass. So like the, the last 379 pages of this. And then I read the first 62 pages of Crown of Midnight on Thursday. So uh, I started Crown of Midnight and uh, at the end of book, Sarah loves to like last little line, like propel you into the next one. So the end of book one, Selena has become the king's champion and um, we some some witchiness is revealed about Nehemia and her abilities. And we once again see like the the old queen and like her summoning or whatever so starting with crown of midnight selena is just chilling around the castle waiting on her official contract with um the king and to start going out on missions for him so uh when that happens he sends her out on missions and lo and behold uh she isn't actually killing nobody and I was like, oh, okay, she walking in with people's heads and hands and this, that, and the third. No. She is having people fake. She's faking these deaths and, like, finding corpses and making them mutilate in the dead bodies already. 
um, and she's pretending that to have done the king's bidding. And somehow in her gorgeous, gorgeous mind, she decides to tell Kaol, even though, and I guess she, she realizes it much later, but Kaol's loyalty is to the king, and he, he shows her that throughout this book, especially like with the things with Nehemia. Um, and so she's like making him complicit. And so in this one, we see more of a shift to her focusing on her relationship to Kaol. You know, they smash. Um, and her like distancing herself from Dorian like we just be friends because I want to be free one day and I can't be free if I'm tied to the crown prince of the realm like, that's that's just not gonna work so in this one uh the first half is like it's broken into two parts um part one and I think it's part two is called the pit I could be wrong about that but uh part two is where we really see like a shift because in part one um we see like a return of someone from Selena's past. So she is given a name. She is asked to kill this man named Archer, who is a court like a, a highly sought after courtesan. But she he is someone she's known from childhood with Arabin because he trained with the Assassin's Guild for some time to like better protect himself um, while he was you know doing his thing. So uh selena you know goes out to see him and she's like giving him the same you know proposition that she's giving everyone else like you need to leave and i'll fake your death but you gotta get out of here but you need to help me and so archer he is not to be trusted and he gives her information but then he also tells the people the information so the people start fleeing and she's like you're giving me bad information because I'm supposed to be interrogating these people, find out what's going on, this plot against the king, and you are double dealing because you're telling me and you're also telling them before I can get to them. So, and uh, in this one, the first part, Nehemia died. She is brutally murdered. Um, and that is like, it snaps Selena a little bit because her last like conversation with Nehemia, Nehemia was like, I am been, I've been doing these things. I've been working with the rebels. I've been trying to, you know, get information from the inside to help the cause. And she was like, you are in a position of power. You have, you know, influence. You can do all these things and you're just a coward. You only care about yourself. And while sure, that's true. I don't think it's wrong of Selena to only be caring about herself um and to be focused on her own well-being because this is the same person who just a few months ago um was a, a slave in the salt mines and prior to that having in a uh you know very abusive essentially um relationship with Arabin and like the, their dynamics and like she's never been free and this is the closest in her mind that she's really getting to freedom. It's like, if I keep my head down and she's already rebelling in her own way by not killing these people, which I think is stupid. Girl, just kill these people and keep them moving. Um, Cause you know, she already know the consequences. You know, if she mess up, then the king's gonna kill Kaol, he's gonna kill his family, he's gonna kill Nehemia, her family, whatever. Her weak, her weakness is always these people that she cares about. And Nehemia's death, like, just snap. So she's like, yeah, I, I need to do better. I need to work with the rebels or whatever. And then we find out that Mr. Archer is like, the second half of this book, Sarah's like, you know what? I'm going to just cram all the plot, all the reveals, all the everything into the last 100 pages. Because we find out Dorian has magic and he has this raw, most powerful magic because when the king, we also found that the king has one of the word marks. Uh, and that's how he was able to, you know, conquer the land. Or he might have one, but he, he may have two. Uh, that's how he was able to conquer the land. And he suppressed everyone's magic but his own, which in turn doesn't suppress Dorian's magic. So Dorian has magic. Archer was a traitor. Um, Kaol was his team king, and he knew about the threat to Nehemia. Archer was double dealing, and he set up Nehemia's murder because she had left with those robbers because she said they were trying to do too much, and that she was going to tell the king um it just so much so much and then we find out we, we, we go through the magical portal we find out that there's a labyrinth under the castle in the glass castle and selena is fey we watch her shape shift to the pointy ears and everything and it is revealed that she is Aelin ash river galifinius the uh, lost heir and the, the true rightful queen of terracin um, and Sarah loves to reuse a plot element because there was definitely a scene where Dorian powered up Selena's sword. D Dorian powered up Selena her sword, uh, Damaris, and you know defeated the bad guys. And we 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 see that in Hellsap. Um, 
And then Dorian, not Dorian, but Kaol and his, his pursuit to protect Selena, uh, he sends her to uh, this other continent that they've been at war with under the guise of killing the crown prince and getting the naval plans. And come to find out, this is the last like stronghold of the Fae, Queen Maeve and all that. And he finds out at the end that these are Selena's cousins, these are her kinfolk. And now he's like, oh Lord Jesus, I done started a fire. So that was kind of midnight. And I said, okay, Sarah. Okay, plot. I see you, girl. Um, so that was Friday. And Friday was day three, I want to say. Yes, Friday was day three. So I read 356 pages of Crown at Midnight. I did not end up starting Air Fire uh, yesterday. Uh, yesterday was just a, a crazy day for me. So I was pleased to have just read the entirety, like finished this. So day two and three, we got Crown at Midnight and Top Throne of Glass done. Today is day four. It is Saturday. It is uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, hold on, I'll show you. Saturday, March 5th. And I am now 100 pages into Air Fire. I started this this morning while I was making my breakfast and doing my morning skincare and all of that. So in this one, we pick up uh, a few months or a few weeks later, Selena has traveled to, uh, what is this place called? The name is escaping me. Winland, okay. So well, she's in Winland, and now we've I've met two characters that I know the girl is always talking about. Well, I know I've heard of Manon quite a bit, and so we've met Manon, and she's one of the Iron Teeth witches. Uh, I think she's like a black bear, black beard, black, black something. Um, and we've seen her, you know be a little vicious which i like and we've also met rowan who is a fake prince i know Chandler was like oh we're never gonna meet rowan and somehow when she said that i thought she said roland like oh we already met rowan but no 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 she's like one of this ancient fake prince and i'm like hmm is rowan the end game because i know that chaos neither chaos nor dorian are in game because people were like oh sarah j mass likes to like introduce a different love interest like later on in the series and then Agatar, it was resand, and so we met Cal and Dorian in book one, and they continue in book two. So I'm like, oh, maybe Rowan, who we meet in book three, might be like the real love interest. Now that we know that Selena becomes Aelin, which I figured out, you know, before we were told that in the book because it was obvious. Um, so uh, she is she's met Queen Maeve, kinda, or like had a virtual chat with her. I don't know how that really went, and she is being tasked to prove herself to Rowan before she can go to where Queen Maeve actually is. And so she's like working in the kitchens there. And then we've uh, like also seen what's going on in Otterlin, um, where uh, Kaya and Dorian aren't as close really as they once were. And this other guy who is a prince in Terrison is like a general to the king and he's like, and, and, and Quay, I was like, wow, he really does look like uh, Selena. They have the same hair, they have the same eyes. Like, how could nobody have noticed? And he has one of those like magic rings that the king kind of uses to like control people's minds or whatever. So that's where I'm at. In Air Fire, today is day four. Um, and the way it's been going is I've been reading a book a day, but the first three books include like the Assassin's Blade, first two books are a bit shorter. This one is. 500 and I want to say 70 pages yeah 565 pages so um I know that the book a day thing may not continue as much but also like I said it was supposed to be reading 715 pages a day and I haven't read 715 pages a single day and I need to film today um so I'm gonna keep reading and doing the things that I need to do and I will update you all either when something major happens or at like the 50 percent mark which for this one will probably be somewhere about here so that's it for this check-in three books down five to go friends it is much later um i'm in the kitchen about to make dinner it's almost 9 p.m actually but today was like a working day I was filming videos, editing videos, like having some rest and relaxation because it is in fact the weekend. Um, so I haven't read as much. I went on a bike ride, but I am now 300 pages into Air Fire. Let me sit y'all down. 
So I just finished part one and we just started part two, which is Air Fighter. And so far, this one is, is, is giving a lot of lore, it's giving a lot of world building because we're learning a lot more about the Fae and their history and the things that have happened with them. I really appreciate the additional POV that like we're learning a lot about obviously the black the iron teeth witches from anon and i really like the battle between us braxos and titus and their relationship and their like the bond that's forming between them two i love a good animal companion situation and i like that manon isn't like a good character she's not someone who's like always obsessed with doing the right thing like she wants to do what's best for her and her people in the 13th so i really enjoy the dynamics there um i'm low-key shipping selena and rowan now, I will say I'm acknowledging that they are very, very, very distant cousins from hundreds of years ago. So that's probably not the best thing. But imagine a little throuple between her, Rowan, and then her other cousin that's like possibly promised to her. It's like her guard is giving like Poppy, Hawk, and Karen a little bit. <laughs> uh, so I'm enjoying this one. I feel like this one, I can see where like Era Fire is really where the series starts to take off and why they like this one so much. Um, we've gotten a lot of Selena like in her faith form and trying to master life like that because obviously she's no longer in Otterland so magic isn't like with like banned or it hasn't been removed from this continent so she we're exploring her power and her power is very strong and it has been since she was a child so we're also getting people who knew her parents and knew her as a child so we're finding out about the things that had happened um and the fear some of the people had about her magic being uncontrollable when she was a child so i'm enjoying it so far so good um i'm actually more than 50 percent of the way through this one because this is 500 and 65 pages long and i'm on page what 308 so i'm making dinner my bestie is here we're gonna have dinner so i don't know if i'm gonna finish it tonight but i am gonna make a good bit of progress because you know he's reading i'm reading he's reading um a night of the seven kingdoms by george R. R. martin how you feeling you liking it yeah yeah that's it it's all we got folks he's liking it i'm making spaghetti um so yeah i'm gonna keep listening while i do that and i will check in with you all in another 100 150 pages because i do know that the last 20 percent is where sarah really liked to put the pedal to the metal so we're gonna see all right all right don't ask me why i'm holding the camera rather than like putting it somewhere but i finished air of fire this morning i really enjoyed this one um going to like a new setting learning new things like the introduction of manon and rowan my king and a what is it adian like these names are way too similar um i really enjoyed that like um the things with the magic system and the world the world building and uh, learning more about the history of the word keys and the word gates and how things got formed and like I enjoyed that there were some things that Selena was figuring out that she didn't share with the reader like about Maeve and the ring and like her her lost love uh, like I really enjoyed that I'm like oh Sarah giving us world building she giving us lore and I said to myself I was like how is it that Arab and Hamel was like such a big part of the Assassin's Blade which came out I think between books three and book four but he has not been referenced at all in the story. And then finally we get to the point where uh, we figure out that the necklace that's like the third word key uh, is the one that Selena had and that Arabin is probably the one who still has it because he has known all along that Selena was actually Aylin, Aylin, Aylin Ash River Galifianakis, whatever, whatever that last name is. So um, like her and Rowan, like I'm, I think I hope Rowan is in game. Uh, I feel like you know we got a little situation because it's gonna be like Rowan. I, I think Adian would be a cute little you know match for her, but he's like her sworn protector. But like he's gonna have to fight Rowan to be her sworn protector because the blood oath, baby. Um, I, I actually really enjoyed that. I can definitely see why people said like, oh, Air of Fire is when the series really becomes a series. It really catches its stride. It really does this and that. I can see it. I can see it for sure. Um, I do feel like. I, oh, I didn't trust Sorcerer from the beginning. I did not trust Sorcerer from the beginning. Dorian is too damn trusting. He's too nice. He's too gullible. And the king is playing checkers. And the rest of the, the, the Scooby and the gang, they are playing 
the king is playing chess, the rest of them are playing checkers. Because how he set a five person trap and every single person fall into it. Can't even say KL got out unscathed because all of them fell for it. I knew Sorcia wasn't long for this world. She was too innocent. She was too uh, just down with the magic and down with all these things that were so outlawed in this world. I knew it wasn't, I, I knew I couldn't trust it. So now uh, the king and everybody else know that Aelin is actually alive and she's made this big stand against killing Narok and all of them. I really think that the killing of Narok and the meeting with Maeve and the Blood Oaths, that should have been like the end of the book and then say this whole thing with the king as to the beginning of that one but i understand that she had to like move the puzzle pieces into place so that we could be you know ready for queen of shadows but i did enjoy that more it felt kind of anticlimactic towards the end there but i am starting queen of shadows uh i think i've lost the 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 you know mark on the page tracker i think this morning when i woke up i had like 120 pages left and i finished that up on some patreon sprints but so whatever i have lost the, the track of that so we're just gonna go with that i'll write it down on my phone to see um queen of shadows is longer than air of fire this one is 650 pages i think so um we're gonna get started on this one i have some errands that i need to run um some things i want to do today so i'll check in with y'all later bye good morning friends happy monday it's 6 42 um getting ready to go to work uh so i want to give you my initial thoughts on queen of shadows so i am 200 pages in mm. Okay, 200 pages in, and how am I gonna make it through Tower of Dawn with Chaos whole POV? Like, he literally makes me physically ill. Um, he's so stupid, he's such a hypocrite, he's so annoying, he's such a fucking goody goody, it makes me sick. So, now, I will say this is the most like action-packed beginning of a story I've read from Sarah JMS because we've already had, you know, Adian's rescue. We've had like fights with like the Vol princes or like the little commanders. We have a lot going on in Manon's POV. Um, I'm happy, you know, Aelin has a member of her court now um we've reunited with air but then he's still just as slimy and evil and ever as ever but i'm like eating it up not gonna lie um hold on. um yeah so so far so good i'm enjoying it but like chaos just makes me sick and we're just getting too much chaos i need rolling back stack um and dorian's pov seems quite honestly and boring because he's just like Oh, I can't remember who I used to be. Oh, I wish it would have killed me. Oh, whatever. Uh, also, this little cripple girl in um, Manon's POV, like the Lady of Pin Bath, whatever. I'm intrigued by her. Something going on with her. I don't trust her either, just like I didn't trust Sorsha. And Sorsha turned out to be. Alright. Sorsha turned out to be a traitor. So I think my instincts are correct. So um, I'm gonna read more Queen of Shadows this morning and I'll probably update y'all when something happens or when I get to the 50% mark. Um, I have to go to work today, obviously. Uh, but uh, this book is like 600 and something pages. So I'm like 20, 30% in. So I'm sure I have more updates. So I'll definitely talk to you again at the 50% mark. Um, uh, unless I have something like major to say prior to that. But here's my very plain, very boring oatmeal breakfast. Hello friends. It is the same day later on in the evening. I just got home. It's 5.30 and I came home to a package. And I literally just finished Queen of Shadows as I was walking in the door. And I'm about to have a snack. What is my snack, you ask? Pita chips and garlic bread from Trader Joe's. I literally broke my nail at work today, which was unfortunate. But y'all, this garlic bread is so good. I mean, only get it if you really like garlic, because it's all it is, like garlic oil, garlic oil, lemon, 
and it's delicious. Mmm. 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 Mm. It's so zesty and garlicky. Mm. It is that right there. Mm. Ooh. Okay. Let's see what's in here, shall we? we've got the throne of the five winds by sc emmett this is book one in the hostage of empire series not all empires are one on the battlefield okay and then we've got the sequel to that well the third book in that series which is the bloody throne and this oh now <laughs> i don't have the second book but this is the third book for Devin Mattson's Reborn Empire, which is a series I'm playing the marathon this year. Fourth book is coming out soon. It's stunning. Um, so that's book one and book three. I don't have book two, but I'm excited. So I'll probably do a vlog where I just marathon the whole series. Um, I'm gonna finish having my snack and my workout before I give y'all my final thoughts on Queen of Shadows. So until then. Good morning, friends. Happy Wednesday. So it's been what, a week since we started this. Um, we're long overdue for an update. I did not talk to you at all yesterday. Um, my last update was like Monday night, right when I finished Queen of Shadows. And I was like, oh, I'm about to go to the gym. I'll give you my thoughts later. I was too tired. I didn't go to the gym. I went to sleep. And then all of yesterday, I read Empire of Storms. So, and I could give you a single update. And it's mainly because I just didn't feel like vlogging on my camera. I'm on my phone and my camera was at home. So, I'm going to do that now. So, let's talk about Queen of Shadows first. So, the way Queen of Shadows ended let me go, like, go read it and refresh myself honestly the start of this book for me was manon for sure um like manon is a queen she also was like my favorite parts some of my favorite parts of um what's the other book book and part of storms so in this one we uh follow selena as uh she is This is following Selena as she is leaving. In the end of, at the end of Air Fire, she is leaving Winland and Rowan to go back to Otterland and save Dorian, try to save or kill Dorian, not Dorian, and kill the king and do what she needs to do to secure the funds for her army. So this one, also Lysandra, Aylin, Aylin and Lysandra are like an iconic duo. Um, they are a very dangerous parent. So this one is very action-packed. Like the first 200 pages of this is like the most action-packed beginning to an SJM book I've read. And at this point, I've read almost all of them. The only things I haven't read of hers are now Tower of Dawn, Kingdom of Ash, and Catwoman. So I think I can say with relative certainty that, let's see. My Uber just canceled, so let's see when is the next one coming. 12 more minutes, okay. Um, so this one is definitely the most action-packed. Uh, we see lots of scheming, and like in this one, like there are schemes that happen at the beginning of this book that we don't even see pay off until the end of Empire Storms. Like, Aelin is constantly scheming. She's got plots on top of plots on top of plots, and I love to see it. Like, her and Lysandra plotting to... You might want, I don't want to spoil you for what's about to happen. 
her and Lysandra like plotting to kill Arabin and get all of his money to fund the war. Like, there's a scene where Adian in later on in this book where he's like, where's our armies? Where's our money? How are we gonna do this? Like basically calling Aelin a, a, a failure. He's like, you're supposed to be our queen. You're supposed to be doing this. But like, what are you doing? And like the whole time she had been, um, she had been plotting, she had been scheming. Like, I'm, and this one is hard for me to talk about just what happens in here because I've already read this. So we're gonna talk about the things that happen here. So we're gonna talk about Empire Storms and then we're gonna connect it to Queen of Shadows. So Empire Storms, this is definitely my top two, maybe like top three, definitely maybe top two. Because I think as of right now, I think Air of Fire is my favorite book. And then, but Crown of Midnight has my favorite ending because the ending is so, explosive um but what happens in here hold on y'all uh, okay what happens in here is we see the gang split up again and we see Aylin and Lysandra going to do one thing because at the end of uh at the end of Queen of Shadows we know in the Queen of Shadows, beginning of this one, we know that uh, Parrington has sent, Parrington and the Matron, I guess, has sent the 13 and some of the other Iron Teeth witches to go and sack Rifthold. Uh, Cause they, at the end of Queen of Shadows, they kill the king. They kill the king of Otterland and they break Dorian free of his like Varg collar and kill like the demon prince inside him. And also Kaol gets paralyzed at the end of um queen of shadows and so they he's not even in empire songs at all so honestly they made it more enjoyable for me but that sucks because i'm about to read tower of dawn and like have to suffer through 600 pages of his his ness uh, also like my thoughts are very scattered i'm so sorry there is absolutely no way you are going to 100 percent understand a and appreciate all the things that happen in this book if you have not read the assassin's blade because the beginning is you see so Rowan has gone, he's he you know he a bird, so he flow, he flow, he flew to Rifthold to save Dorian because you know Manon and Aelin have like this like bond almost and uh they have alternated alternated on one another a life debt. So they have beef, but like the god uh, goddesses that guide each of them, they like they had moments so um when they were meeting with the clans and the king trying to see like his magic weapon and they had the witches that created for him these mirrors um uh, they had tried to kill each other and so uh manon tried to kill aelin aelin tried to kill manon whatever but then uh aelin had got away and manon was about to be crushed and die and so aelin was like you know what no i'm not gonna do that so she goes and she runs and she catches manon and she gets her to safety or whatever and she leaves her and the 13 get them also Abraxas, my baby my baby uh so then manon finds she meets dorian and they have this like tension and i was like oh i'm scared if manon and dorian are going to be in game because even with the var collar on like the thrall collar and the var prince inside him um the valve excuse me uh dorian kind of came out a little bit when manon was around and so manon in blood put all over rift world she rift rift world she was like rift hold she's like oh witch killer because you know uh aelin killed uh bobby Ye yellow legs she was like witch killer she left a message that only aelin will understand it was basically like dorian still in there so when she finds that out she sends rowan flying 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 he flying at his the, the most his wings to take he flies to rift hold to save dorian all this while the 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 iron teeth witches and the the wyvern they are sacking rift hole they are burnt like uh crashing down the like glass wall that selena made to protect the people of rift hold rift world whatever child from the glass shattering from the glass castle so when that happens uh manon is in there and manon kills the witches that's trying to get dorian she's like you know what prince I, this is me 
owing you one and you owing me one and me getting back from Selena because something in you I could just see the vibes and that's when Rowan comes in and Rowan snatches up Dorian and now they run they run and run and run so they go and Selena's like we're gonna meet up at Pirate Island like and this is so if you haven't read Assassin's Blade you don't know because you wouldn't have met Rolf and been in the Pirate Island but that's the first story in the Assassin's Blade is the Assassin and the Pirate Lord because that's when like selena's downfall kind of starts and the beginning of the story and how she the the first step in her ending up in the salt mines and then uh so so much is happening in here with her and you got like these ships kind of developing like so the pair the pairs you got manon and dorian you got aelin and rowan you've got adian and lysandra um you got Lorcan. we ain't even talked about Lorcan. lee i can't stand elite i want her to die a painful miserable death i want her to be chopped up into little pieces and fed to the wyverns like i need i need her up Ooh, i just can't stand her but they're they're gonna be up here you can like see them developing these films to one another you see aiden and garrel and his dad like reconnect uh it's just it's very very precious uh so so much happens in here so in the end child mave mave um, somehow Maeve was 16 steps ahead, but when it counted at the end, she was distracted. Now, I don't know if I buy that, but she was distracted by what was going on with them. And she didn't even peep that Aelin no longer had the workies and she had given the workies to Manon. So this whole time, the, the gods from thousands of years ago, child, they have been guiding Manon, Dorian, Selena, all these people to get into the, I mean, these, get them in these specific places. And so we find out that, uh the the that a elena the first queen she did something she wasn't supposed to do and her punishment has been that her line and gabriel's line and like galen's line whoever the a thousand years from now basically they were gonna have to basically pay in blood to like put the word keys back in the word gay because she wasted the lock on um like containing this this dark guy who was the one that was the power player behind the king so it's giving like a misborn energy where like you kill the dark lord you think but it's actually a bigger baddie out there waiting um so that's what happens with that and so when this happens um they find out that uh selena aelin would have died uh that night of the the night that her parents were killed she actually was dead but elena brought her back to life and then she was like i know somebody who's close by who can protect you who has the like who's close enough and who has the ability to protect you so she summoned arobin the assassin lord from his bed his sleep made him go get the girl take care of the girl all that and she been lying to her whatever because basically uh they're both from like mala's line and look So, so many things happen. So, at the end of Empire Storms, we have the, the board has been scattered in one area, but Aelin, Miss Six Steps Ahead, Miss Chestnut Checkers, has gotten, has gotten the, the, she Avengers assembled. That's basically what happened. Like, she sent out the bat signal, everybody came. Not me mixing the comic series of, you know, DC, Marvel, whatever. So, she calls in Ansel. So, Ansel is also a character that you meet in the assassin and the red desert i maybe i don't know the name of it but it's when she has to go to the silent assassins and meet the mute master and get trained by him and so it's her bestie who betrayed her but she uh, owed her a life debt so uh, and uh elena calling in all the, i keep combining her names aelin and selena she combining it she's taking in all her life debts so she calls her and she says babe i need you to go raise me an army i need you to go sack Missandra, whatever i need you to get to that this is the girl who was the crown princess whatever of briarcliff so she she does that and this girl she come in with the ships she's like oh we did this i got an army here 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 for you boom now also in that same assassin story she saves the life of the son of the mute master now the mute master is the one who gave her the money to pay off her her debt to Erebus so that she would no longer be a slave to him so she had saved the son and the dad so she called in the the assassin skill and she was like baby i saved everybody in here I need y'all to come bring that heat so illy is the son of the mute master and all those silent assassins pull up on the beach let me not even get started on the scene where aelin burns 500 ilkin in the air okay uh then hold on child i've been talking for 12 minutes oh my uber's gonna be here in one minute so 
Five Storms, fantastic. Fantastic. So next up, I'm gonna be reading Tower of Dawn. I'm gonna take my camera to work, I think, so that I can give you some more updates because otherwise you wouldn't get them. It is extremely ugly outside today, but you know, we ball. So I will see y'all later. Y'all, I almost let a whole nother book go by before I updated y'all. So if you care, the day didn't get much better, but it's okay. Wednesday's a wash. We're gonna try it again tomorrow. Um, so I'm reading Tower of Dawn. It's not very good. It's not very good. Least favorite of the series for sure. Okay, y'all. He's so boring. He's so judgmental. He don't have no skills, no allies, no magic, no redeeming qualities really. Can't do nothing. Just, just it's not a good diplomat. Anyway. Um, 440 pages in. I could have finished this today. I read all of Empire of Storms yesterday. I could have finished this today, but I'm just not having a good time. Like, I only read like 140 pages of it while I was at work because I was just like, I I don't wanna. It's not good, and I like wasn't doing much today. I could, I had plenty of time to read. I decided to um edit a reading vlog and start editing this vlog instead like i just didn't want to read this and it just put me off from reading anything but like this is boring actually also like nothing is happening and i think it is worse um because of the fact that empire storms was so exciting and so explosive and so many things were going on constant reveals constant connections things like that and like while we have gotten a little bit more of the history and the lore and the world building from you know the Coggin and, and their people and like you know finding out about the um torches man and the different people of the southern continent it hasn't been worth the 450 pages like i'm told the tower of dawn has like a really big plot twist that's like pivotal to the direction of the series and changes things from before and i'm sure that's great and all but uh, kayal cannot carry a book like erin sure she's nice she's not the most interesting or engaging character she's very flat nesrin saying i don't find her particularly engaging i mean i think the dynamic and the things that we're learning in her pov about the like the, the stygian spiders bro they, they are very scary in my mind because i'm afraid of spiders so horse sized spider women creep me out how am i gonna get through children of time i have no idea but i'm not having a good time so i'm gonna finish this tomorrow because i want to start kingdom of ash tomorrow and i want to have it done by friday at the latest um, but Tower of Dawn is just not very good. And I don't know if the twist or anything would be written. And I also just think like it's very, it's very drawn out. It, it is very bloated. Like for, if my intel is correct, this was originally supposed to be a novella. And then it somehow became 650, 60 pages. And I think that it shows because there isn't enough plot to bear the weight of all these pages um neither irene nesrin or kaol are interesting enough to have a whole book dedicated to them like the stuff with the cock and he's just like not yet not yet not yet so th there hasn't been much progress on the political front we haven't really secured an alliance like chaos is a terrible ambassador he's even admitted himself that he doesn't know that he would fully say he puts his trust in Aylin. so it's like why would you your only benefit right now is that you're in a place where you need to get healed and you have the ability to try and influence these people to help your cause you think helping your cause is telling people you don't trust Aylin? Aylin who saved your life Aylin who saved your best friend Aylin who what like who are you nobody literally nobody so you know who knows maybe the plot twist will be he's one of these ancient foretold kings and he'll be somebody he'll actually prove some worth but we'll have gotten six books seven if you count the novella but we can't count him i guess six books into the series before he actually provided proved that he has some worth so i don't i don't know that it's worth it like i like kale in the beginning uh and then he had his little tam and personality transplant and i'm just not a fan so i mean i guess i can't blame him that's sarah's problem or sarah's fault but it doesn't make for an enjoyable reading experience for this one because it's not compulsively readable 
like the other books in this series have been so i'm extremely disappointed in this book but alas i shall continue on so i'll talk to y'all in the morning it's my bedtime and i'll probably listen to some of the audiobook before i go to bed uh because i am like mid chapter um but yeah overall this is boring it's a dud 10 out of 10 do not recommend good morning friends happy thursday um so since we spoke last night i have read like 110 more pages and now i'm in chapter 53 page 552 so i only have like 130 ish pages left to go and the big twist the big reveal that made with the queen of the ball they could have been in a novella that could have been woven into empire storms or kingdom of ash i don't think this this six almost 700 page book was necessary for me to find it out also finding out that falcon is lysandra's uncle i feel like it's unnecessary like every single character in this universe does not have to be connected to another character like falcon was already connected to selena aelin and we met him you know in the uh, short story collection and we see him here and he has a part to play here but he's, he doesn't have to be related like i just i read a review and it was like it's kind of not annoying but like why does every single person in the story has to be paired off like that like the whole gang is all with somebody else and now KO is and Irene like I talk about relationships I don't buy into is that one like I already don't like KO and I understand that that is something that happens often between people who are injured or in like the caretaker trope and people fall for the caretaker same way with like the bodyguard trope with people who are around you often to make you feel safe and comfortable and it's easy to ro develop romantic feelings there I don't like KO I don't necessarily like Kaol and Irene together. Irene is fine as a character. Kaol, he he could die. I don't care. But I just don't think their relationship adds anything to the story. I think that this was supposed to be a novella. It should have stayed a novella. Because it's, it's just, it's not adding anything. Like, I didn't need to read 500 pages to find out that the healers were sent by the Fae to, like, cluster up there and get ready for the end times. Or that the spiders are also log. Like, all the information... Because it happened, we found the, all the information out within like 50 pages. We could have had a novella. Could have been a 150 page novella. Could have been a 200 page novella. This book did not need to be 700 pages long. And sure, Chaos healing journey is fine or whatever, I guess. I like that he wasn't magically healed, even though technically he was healed by magic. But it was a slow and arduous process for him. But that the same way it happened off page, all this happened off page while we were in Empire of Storms, it could have continued happening off page. So not a fan but i'm very close to finishing it so i'm gonna be finishing it today because we are doing park testing i don't know if you're familiar with that but it's like national testing we're doing a mock park today and tomorrow so i have like the morning off from my usual stuff so i'm gonna finish this up and i'm going to continue editing this vlog because i actually brought my sd card reader today so i can do that so Sorry for this weird angle. I have y'all propped up on a file thing and on a box of tissues. But I wanted to get this update done before I finish the book because these are my thoughts right now. Because I know Sarah likes to pack a whole book sorts of information and plot within the last hundred or so pages. So I wanted to like give you an update prior to that because I feel like my you know maybe my feelings might change. I still don't think this book would need to be this long, but alas. Good morning, my friends happy what friday today is day i wanted to be finishing up this vlog but i don't know what's gonna happen because right now that's my bacon i am not having a great time so yesterday i finished yesterday morning i finished tower of dawn and honestly this is just very boring like the girls should have took the keyboard away like this is an actual case of like the essential information that you need to know that was pivotal to the plot could have been a novella now i also believe that you shouldn't put pivotal information to a series in a novella i think you should include it in a book but since we had already broken that rule i think that this the, the essential information in, needed in here could have easily been uh a novella that was well i guess it would have it wouldn't have come out at the same time as assassin's blade but a novella that could have been added to the end or the beginning of 
Empire of Storms or Kingdom of Ash. Kingdom of Ash already a thousand pages long, so it, it wouldn't have made much difference to add the hundred pages maybe of essential information from here. So in the, the, the big hoo-ha is that Maeve is the queen of the Vogue. The uh, Stygian spiders are Vogue and they're not like infested, they're just born Vogue. Um, uh, the pregnant sister, like the pregnant daughter of the Coggin was infested by the Vogue and she had killed the younger sister. Nezrin, and like all this isn't essential, but these are just like the things that happen at the end. Nezrin ends up with Sartak, who is the heir to the great Coggin, um, and uh, Irene saving the pregnant daughter's life is what is what leads to the great Coggin deciding to, you know, send his, his armada and all that with him. Because Stygian, uh, excuse me, Sartak controls the, like, one of the sons, Sartak, he controls the, like, Rook Riders and, like, their people. And so he was going to bring a thousand other little birds to come help fight the war. Another son is the Horse Lord. He's, he ruled over, he was like, I'm down because they all saw what was going to happen. And then Kaol and Irene, Kaol was re-injured by the Vogue princess, because we, now we know they can be princess and princess that was living inside the sister. And so for Irene to heal him, the great healing goddess from back in the day appeared, was like, you're gonna have to pay a price. She didn't know what the price was, but she said, I'll pay it. I'm like, oh, it's given biblical, but okay. Um, and she decided, like, the penalty is that, like, her health and Chaos' health are tied together. So, one dies, they both die. If she's tired, then Chaos can't really walk on his own. So, I will say that I think, now, I am a disabled person, but my disability is not me being in a wheelchair. It's not me not having use of my legs. Uh, my disability has to do with chronic pain. Um, so I can't say that this particular thing was well done, but I do appreciate that Kaol continues to struggle with his disability and he struggles physically and mentally and how those things impact other areas of his life. Cause like when I am in pain, my conflict management skills, the way I communicate, all that is impacted by how much pain that I'm in and how uncomfortable I am, how certain situations put me on edge just because by the, like the ableist nature of certain things. And I will say like, you know, a lot of the time people with disability get like magically healed and that didn't happen here, but it did. He did get magically healed. He also just got magically re-injured. Um, and his journey with his own disabilities, like he went from wanting to be fixed and kind of wanting, you know, to feel whole and to feel like a man again, to feeling that way and realizing that his worth, his, you know, self-image does not depend on him being able to walk. And I will say, once he was able to ride horses, he was just like, if I can't walk, if I can do this, like, I can, I can fight. And his real thing was he wanted to be able to contribute to the war effort because all of him and his people were doing that. So, like, I think that that particular element of this book was well done. But that being well done does not mean that we needed a, like, 600-plus page book. I just... I just don't think that we did. Oh, my pillow's about to go off with my own, for my own. Uh, overall, this is probably my least favorite in the series because I don't think Irene, Kaol, or Nesrin were interesting enough and had enough personality to carry this whole book. Like, it was, mm. And then I started Kingdom of Ash yesterday. I could have read so much more Kingdom of Ash, but I just chose not to because it wasn't very good. So I am 265 pages into Kingdom of Ash, and baby, the way these are the same size, the way the Tower of Dawn is actually a little bit bigger because they went sh full Bible pages in Kingdom of Ash because it's definitely 300 pages longer. Um, like, I, I don't like that all the like players are scattered across the board because we spent several books getting these people together and positioning them and starting to bring them together. And then the events at the end of Empire Storms well, the end with K on them, it would be the end of events at the end of Queen of Shadows. But then with everybody else, the events at the end of Empire and Storms cost them to, like, scatter again. So this first 250 pages, we have Aelin being tortured by Karen and Maeve. And Aelin realizing that Maeve might be Vogue because her blood was black. And we have Rowan. Oh, that's, that's, hold on. Okay. I don't know if I said, but it is 
I'm getting ready to head out to work. So, um, gotta make this quick. Um, so that's going on. K.R. and the Cognies fleet and people are on their way to figure out where to meet up with them because they ain't got no cell phones. They don't have no communicate. They ain't have no pre-established places to go. They don't know anything like chaos because all this has been happening while Empire Stone is going on. So they don't know where everybody is. They don't even know that aliens been captured. They don't know because the, the, the gang is split up. So Manon and Dorian in the 13, they went out in search of the croc. Uh, and then somehow during the journey of chaos traveling with the Coggin folk, him and his wife, they go to Aranel to warn his father and try to get the people there together. Rowan, Lorcan, Gavriel, maybe they're just those three. Um, they are trying. They they went to Attica or something like that. They're trying to find Aelin, uh because. You know, they're like, we, we heard that May probably put us somewhere. So, like, all the people are all over the place, and they don't have any, like, this is how we're going to communicate with each other. This is how the, the drops that we're going to do. Like, no pre-established systems. <clears throat> and then Adian and Lysandra and the Bane and somebody else, they, they somewhere else fighting. So, the, the, they just everywhere. And, like, this beginning is just not giving. Uh, I, I hope that Sarah didn't peek at Empire of Storms because, like, this book is a thousand pages long, so that's something to me very sad. Okay, my bad. My memory card was full. Um, I hope she didn't peek within within that because that's going to make the next 600 plus pages really hard for me. Um, so, yeah. Right now, where I'm at, uh, Lorcan and company and Rowan and company, they have just retrieved Aelin and she is going through it with the iron mask and they just use like the word marks to like get her off like get those things off of her and the lead is with them um and i really don't understand fully a leads like beef with lorkin because like well yes lorkin's signaling signal to mave where they were but mave was already coming but also lorkin's signaling is what let the people let aelin and company know that the 500 ilkin were on their way so that they could prepare and not be ambushed and which led to their success in that particular area so like y'all would have been killed by the ilkin already so like and like she's like oh you crawl like a dog after him like you don't understand you're a, a, a barely human child like you've been on this earth 20 years man 500 years old you couldn't fathom the depth of feeling attached to a blood oath and all of them are like everybody who had their blood oath forcibly broken by Maeve is like literally going through you can't and like her holding it against him also how they still ain't got a lead no pads in like three books they ain't got her nothing why she still bleeding on Lorcan's shirts i don't get it they live in all these towns you can you can gather armies and all this and y'all can't find some cotton for my good sis she got the menstruate on this man's shirt. I don't know. I'm not a fan. Not a fan. Anyway, so I'm sure you'll get another. I always say, oh my God, you have to update 50%. And I'd be like, oh, I finished the book. I don't think it's going to happen today. I am going to try and finish this today. I don't have much to do at work today because it's day two of testing. They might try and switch it up because I didn't do nothing yesterday. And they'd be like, oh, you got you to gotta do a lot. I don't know. But I'm going to eat breakfast and head to work. So I will chat to y'all later. Um, and hopefully things improve. Y'all, I am 500 pages into Kingdom of Ash. And I'm not having a good time. Sorry if it's a little shaky. I'm holding the camera with my hand. Um, but it's just boring nothing is happening the characters are not communicating with the, with one another for them to be an army they are scattered to the winds and even when parts of the army are coming together they're still not communicating with the other parts they don't no one knows what the other group is doing they don't know where the other group is like they're not using it they're not even making any attempts to communicate with one another like aiding in the bane and what's going on with uh kaol and co and aelin and co at annie L. Like, the only character who is bringing any type of energy, any type of intelligence, any type of cunning is Manon. Like, Dorian is just playing around with his, sh you know, shape-shifting abilities. Manon said, oh, all y'all black beat crones, all the crones, three y'all, y'all hoes can get it. She said, I'm going to draw this line in the sand. Y'all not going to cross this line. That's not your crown. Take it off. Take it off or I can cut your head off and I'm going to snatch it off. And that's what she did. 
Manon is giving. Manon is carrying this story on her back. Like, this book did not need to be a thousand pages long because in the first 500, absolutely nothing has happened. It took 250 pages for them to get reunited with Aelin, and then they linked up with Kaol, but like, and they just got 80 of them out there flouncing in the wind, and they're about to get trampled by the bad guys. Like, talk about poor management. Daryl, he need to choke. Daryl and Kaol need to die. Uh, Aiden can die because the type of stuff that he says to Lysandra, he deserves a painful death. Like, pull out his toenails, rip off his skin, feed it to him, and then make him throw it up again and set him on fire and douse it out. Like, torture. He deserves the electric chair because the stuff he said to Lysandra is like things I wouldn't say to my worst enemy and we're supposed to be allies, we're supposed to be friends. And this is not the first time he's done that because he did a similar thing to Aelin and in this book also, he's like, in his inner monologue, how he regret doing that, whatever. He's still doing it to Lysandra. Like, who are you? What do you, who are you to be doing? Child, it would seem Miss Sarah peaked with Empire Storms. She had a three book run between Air of Fire, Queen of Shadows, Empire Storms, but she was just in her bag. And then she deviated from the bag to write Tower of Dawn, which is supposed to be a novella. And then she just, the keyboard just had a life of its own. And then the keyboard is still possessed with Kingdom of Ash because all these words and nothing is happening. I am not having a good time. I'm not enjoying my reading experience. I really want it to be over. I hate that this vlog and this book, this series is ending on such a sour note. Granted, I still have almost 400 pages to go and yes, anything can happen. And I know that like Aileen going through the whatever on the winter solstice is a thing that I have to look forward to. But it's just, I haven't, this has not been an enjoyable reading experience for me. This is I'm more than 50% of the way through the book. Um, that even if the second half is amazing, it's not going to overshadow the slog of this first half and how not, not much essential or not much essential has happened in the 500 pages to justify that length. So, yeah, this is where the editor should have came in and been like, let's hang it up, sister. But I'm going to take a break from this book for right now and I'm going to just do something else because it's just I have a migraine and this book is just making it worse because it's just not good and i'm just continuing to read continuing to read hoping it's going to get better Aileen and her ptsd and Fenrin and whoever and they're like i understand that but y'all fighting a war you're not using your greatest asset y'all not even communicating that's the main thing they're not communicating <sighs> it's just stressing me out i'm not having a good time i'll talk to y'all later good morning friends happy saturday it is 7:54. It's very ugly outside. It's like rainy and sleety. And so that's why the light in is a little, you know, but I'm still reading Kingdom of Ash and it's so bad. It sucks so much. Like, oh my God. Right now I am 764 pages in. And my still biggest critique is that all these people are linking up in these two different clusters, but they still haven't got together. Adi and Lysandra and them literally out there fighting for their lives. And Aelin and the superpower gang are just like, like, yeah, they fighting too, but like, how is it y'all still haven't communicated with one another? Like, we're on it right now. Dorian just came through with the third working. And they decide they're going to... Put it back in there. They just said, fuck Terrison. We're not going to go to Terrison. We're going to try to end this thing right now. Um, and the only, like, not good thing, but the only thing of note, of, of, of merit that has happened in the last however long is, like, the stuff with the 13. Like, Manon uniting the, 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 the Cochrane witches that are scattered around. Manon beating the old bitch up putting the crown on and being queen of the witches like yeah i'm in here manon and abraxos and petra blue blood coming in getting her vengeance on iskra yellow legs yes i was here for it period manon and the 13 deciding it's gonna be our last stance queen we need you to live we're gonna sacrifice ourselves because we're gonna go kill the matron we're gonna take this tower down and y'all ain't gonna be able to do this no more and they did and just sitting there watching manon watch all of her all of her sisters okay the 13 were her sisters these are her road dolls they ate boom boom they locked in for a century okay 
watching them each fall to make the way for Astrid the unclean to kill the matron and then to take down the tower and then for the all yield to destroy the tower that's the only good thing that's been happening but when I tell you that's literally such a small part like I just like Sarah was it crack what was it what was it that that made you do this for what like nothing 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 has happened okay this is sarah that was right in crescent city mm, this the, this the sarah like this is that era in her bag dropping these fire books here it didn't pass that season has gone away um and it's just i'm still like damn i still have so much of this book left and it sucks so much oh like literally i'm like i really wanted to dnf this book at, at multiple points in in time but i'm like not me dnf in the finale the finale of the series when i read seven other books <sighs> i'm getting my blood pressure up and y'all I still have more than 200 pages left to go. Like, Sarah, please, please, please. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go read some more. I'm gonna try and do some healing because I wanted this to be done. Like, this could have been done so easily yesterday, but I just did not enjoy it. I was not enjoying it Thursday. I didn't want to read it. I was just like, I'm going to do something else. Was not enjoying it yesterday. And I was already in a bad mood. Uh, so I'm like, this book is just making it worse. And now I'm just like, this video has to go up tomorrow. That's what I've planned for. That's what I've told the people. And I'm just like, come hell or high water, come DNF in this book or not, it's going to go up tomorrow. And I'm just like, Sarah, baby, work with me, please. Okay. I'm going to take some deep breaths. My throat's starting to feel a little, might be getting a little sicky sick. Um, <clears throat> that's it. Bye. Friends, we have reached the end of the road. Today, I finished Kingdom of Ash. And I hated it. I hated it. <laughs> um, what a way to end this vlog. What a way to end this series. Um, we, you know, we, we went on a journey. We were like this, and then we were like this, and we were like this, and then it was like, ah. but we're here. It's done. I did it. Um, Kingdom of Ash, final thoughts on the ending. Um, I think it kind of rings false that the whole main gang survived. I think, like, the only... He's not part of the main gang, but on the periphery of the main gang, because he was part of the cadre, is Gabriel. Gabriel's the only notable death in the thousand page finale of the world, but the only notable death in the series. Like, I guess you could say, oh, Nehemia died, but Nehemia died in the second book. And she was fridged essentially to motivate uh, Selena and a Aelin to to go and, and be great and do all these things. But like nobody else died. How in 5,008 pages ain't nobody pop up dead? Amazing to me. All the bad guys dead. None of y'all are maimed or nothing. No, I'm by it. Uh, it just, this book was unnecessarily long. It was way too long and it just dragged out endlessly. And I will say the one bright star of this book was Manon. Manon and the 13 and her unite in the Cockroom Witches and her and Abraxos and their relationship and just her doing what needed to be done the whole book. Like her, Man Manon is probably my favorite character in the whole series because she is really that girl. She really is. Manon did what she had to do. Her loyalty was to the 13 first and foremost and to the end. Her, uh, her and Abraxos, their relationship, like Manon is the type of person I want in my corner. She is right or die. She is clutch. She gonna do what I have to do like to the bloody end. And like, I love her. Uh, but this book just, 
I feel like a lot of the character development that we got in some of the other books kind of just fell flat here. I wasn't invested in any of the relationships. Like, I was never invested in K.L. and Irene. Uh, I was intrigued by Manon and Dorian. Uh, Rowan and Aelin, their relationship just kind of fell flat for me in this book. Uh, right, let's, Adian needs to die. Like, honestly, he was forgiven in the end. I don't think he was deserving of it. I don't think that his little weak ass apology justify how he talked to Lysandra, how he talked to his queen, like Daryl needed to die. Uh, his 11th hour, you know, apology and whatever, unacceptable off of his head. Like heads was gonna roll if I was the queen. They lucky I ain't the queen cause I'm chopping necks, baby. What? Um, this just, this is so disappointing to me because while I could say that, okay, Tower of Dawn, I was never really set up to like that book because I just didn't care about K.L. and his K.L. story. But coming in here, like, this is a war book. This is really where all these pieces that we've seen be maneuvered and be, you know, positioned and all the things are coming to a head. We, and it's like, this book has a similar thing to, like, Sleep in the Sea of Stars where it's like, several rising and falling actually like the first 250 pages is about Aelin being tortured by Maeve and and them you know her getting reunited with the people and also up until the literal end of the book the last 150 pages is finally when Aelin and Adian like those two parts of the army got back together what were we doing for 850 pages like what type of war y'all wasn't communicating like <sighs> honestly this is the worst book in this series for sure for sure for sure uh, uh least favorite so that has been me reading all eight books in throne of glass i thought it would be you know good to like give you like a tier ranking of like least favorite to my favorite so let's do that my least favorite of course is going to be kingdom of ash this is the worst book in the series and i think it probably would not have been as bad if it wasn't so long because it was definitely tedious to get through like i started this on thursday and i just kept putting it off reading something on friday finishing up today like here's what i found girl hush this just was not good and like I, it's not just a thousand pages long i eat up thousand pages long books it's just that this was not enjoyable to read it it just it didn't do anything for me okay second least favorite tower of dawn i hate kaol both well not both but kaol nezer and irene are all very boring very uninteresting to follow so going from there uh my next least favorite is probably gonna be Throwing a glass. Throwing a glass was an intro, but nothing much was really happening there. It it did what it needed to do, I guess. Um, it was sufficient, but it like mm, nothing going on. Next up, we have the Assassin's Blade. Like some of the stories, mm, but some of them were really good. Like I really did like the Assassin and the Healer, the Assassin and uh, the Desert, or whatever that story is called, where she goes to meet the Meat Master really enjoyed that story so stories that i really really enjoy obviously here uh the next one is going to be crown of midnight the first half of crown of midnight was given thrown a glass it was given you know kind of boring not much going on but the second half of crown of midnight this is probably like the second most explosive ending in the series uh in my estimation um my next favorite would probably be queen of shadows and honestly i would say this one because this is really where i feel like this is manon's book for sure this is where manon black beak really is just doing what she needs to do okay um my next favorite these top two are like mutually like my favorite but if i had to rank them i would say my second favorite is air of fire because this is where uh selena really becomes aelin this is where she goes off to uh was it window whatever and she meets rowan and she really gets in touch with her power and we get more of the history the lore and the world building that also happens in queen of shadows and then obviously y'all know my, my wrist situation is precarious but the best my favorite book in the series is empire storms i read this book in one like one day one sitting because it was just fantastic it was amazing it did all the things so this has been my throne of the glass reading vlog like this has been so exciting i hate that it ended on such a sour note because empire tower of dawn and kingdom of ash were both ass but i overall had a very fun time with this series and of course resan make an appearance in every single series that sarah j mass does it would seem with uh you know aelin going through the worlds and seeing resan and Feyre 
And um, what would that be? Crawled Four Frost and Starlight when she's pregnant. Um, or Akasif, I guess. But overall, I had a good time. I had a very good time. And I enjoyed, like, finally understanding so many other, so many things that the community talks about. And so many characters and things like that. This is definitely my favorite Sarah J. Mass series. I'm going to do a whole Sarah J. Mass video. So that is coming. But uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed going on this journey with me. If you made it to the end of this video, let's leave a broom emoji for the Cochran witches and the brooms that they were flying on and Manon reuniting the Cochrans and the, and the Iron Teeth witches. And I will see you all in my next video. If you want to leave me a recommendation for like another series you think I should marathon, please do so. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.